Hi there, welcome to the channel and welcome to pepper planting time. So I am getting everything set up to do my peppers, starting them indoors. It is approximately 10 weeks until our last frost date here on the Saskatchewan prairies, which is usually around the third week of May. I usually try to keep my peppers um, indoors or you know harden them off at the end of May and don't really usually plant them out till early June because they are you know one of the tender tender vegetables that we try growing here in our cold climate and lots of times we get you know a surprise uh, frost at the end of May sometimes so just to be safe I like to keep my peppers you know moving them indoors and outdoors a little longer than uh, my other vegetables and planting them out early June so really we're probably about 12 weeks from from that it is uh, mid-march right now but i'm excited to get them going and uh, i have four different varieties i'm going to plant this year i made the decision not to plant any hot peppers because i realized i don't really like hot peppers i don't do a lot of cooking with them um, i make them into spices but i didn't really think i wanted to use up any extra space in my garden for something that i don't really want or, or eat or enjoy too much so uh, my sister-in-law always makes beautiful salsa with jalapeno peppers every fall so I'll let, let the, her keep doing that for me and that's about the only other thing that um, I would want hot peppers for. So one of the sweet pepper varieties I've been growing for three two three years now is a sweet Italian frying pepper. These seeds were sent to me uh, in a seed exchange I did a couple years ago and Hickory Croft Farms in Ontario sent me some of their seeds that they harvested. I grew them uh, indoors and outdoors over the next last couple years and I started collecting my own seeds and got a nice supply of them here. So those will be one of the ones I'll be growing. Um, King of the North is a good standard um, pepper to grow, you know, if you like a good sweet pepper that's got a nice solid flesh they are usually just a green pepper that um, if it you know can be outside long enough or we have a nice long growing season they will turn red as well and this was another one that i bought it's a um, a rainbow blend because um, i don't very often get much more than green peppers and maybe the odd one like the sweet italian that turns red but this is also supposed to have a um, orange variety, orange bell, a purple beauty, and a golden California wonder. So we'll see. It says every seed, every plant will produce a different color. So don't know what I'm going to get. So I'm going to try planting up six of these in my cells here and hopefully we get a nice variety of colors. And the last one that I picked up that I didn't know there was such a thing was a sweet banana pepper. Um, I always tried to grow hot banana peppers but didn't know there was such thing as a sweet so we will be trying those as well I could see those will be a nice uh, fresh eating pepper you know for salads or just to eat with some dip I'm hoping uh, my king of the north and um, the rainbow I'll get a good crop where I can you know chop up and freeze my peppers because I really like using peppers in my cooking you know having them pre-chopped and frozen they are great to throw into a lot of different meals so hoping this year that I actually get a harvest that I can um, preserve for the winter so I have got my containers ready here with my seed starting mix that I have made myself and what I've done is I've got them in a tray that I will be bottom watering I've put a couple inches of water in here about a, about an hour ago and it has soaked up all the water so these are nice and moist and ready for the seeds so I just use some kind of a little stick to make a hole and I usually try to plant two seeds per cell just to make sure we get some germination I have seen um, on some videos and some Googling that I've done on, you know, on peppers that uh, you could keep two plants together in the cell right up until planting and plant them together. Apparently they kind of protect each other and they can grow um, close together like that. So um, if I turns out that I have two good strong plants in a cell, I might just keep them there till, till they go out in the garden and see how it goes. 
So I'm just Googling some fun facts here about peppers and um, most of us probably know this. We, we refer to them as a vegetable, but they are actually a fruit because they flower and they have seeds inside. And what I'm reading here is that um, red peppers actually have twice as much vitamin C as a green pepper. So I guess letting them ripen is, uh, you know, that's one of the benefits you get if you can ripen your uh, peppers. I find that some summers, you know, if we don't have a particularly warm summer, a lot of, you know, cool spells that peppers don't do as well. They, they like a lot of heat. And sometimes at the end of August, we get early frost and that pretty much finishes the whole pepper <laughs> season unless you, you know, can keep them covered or move them indoors. So every year it's, for me, uh, it's kind of just a wait and see what kind of a, a pepper harvest I end up with. It also says here that bell peppers have the highest level of vitamin C um, of any produce item. So uh, a pepper can provide you more than 300% of your daily requirement of vitamin C. So just uh, another reason to keep peppers in your daily diet. So I have planted up some of the rainbow ones here and now we're doing the King of the North. And as I said, most of these start out as green peppers and if you can keep them on the vine as long as possible, they will ripen and turn into other colors. So we will see what we can get at the end of the season. So I am just putting them about a quarter of an inch below the surface here and then just lightly tamping them and covering them up. Of course, I'm going to end up with way more pepper plants that I need or that I want to actually put into my garden. I'm hoping, uh, you know, if I have good success with them and they turn into some nice sized plants, I usually just end up giving them to other friends and family to try and uh, spread them around and hopefully help somebody else grow some peppers. So another good thing about the sweet pepper versus the hot pepper, they um, are a little bit faster to maturity. They have a shorter growing period. Hot peppers, uh, they recommend you start them earlier and of course they thrive in heat. Um, so these ones are all around that 75 day to maturity. So that um, is when you actually put them in the ground, not when we're uh, planting them today. So if I have these out in the garden uh, first part of June, I should hopefully be seeing some peppers ready to harvest um, early to mid-August. So peppers usually germinate within seven to 14 days. You could have faster germination if you put these on a seed heating mat, which I usually do a seedling mat. Um, I have my flowers back there on it right now. But this year I'm gonna try something different. I'm going to try starting my peppers inside my grow tent. Uh, normally, like I say, I'm doing it on a shelf, on a heat mat, under some uh, lights. But uh, my, my grow tent has been so wonderful for growing uh, food all winter. And I've kind of cleaned it out today and made some room. So I'm, I've put a table in there. We're gonna try setting these in the grow tent a little closer to the light. It's very nice and warm in there, which peppers love. They like nice warm heat to germinate. So we'll see if I have success using my grow tent this year to start my peppers and also plan, hopefully if I make room for it, I will be doing my tomatoes in there, which we'll be planting probably in the next couple days as well. So that will probably be on the next video. So the soil here is pretty moist. I don't really need to spritz it too much, but I'll just give it a little bit here. And then I always like to do a little bit of vermiculite on the top just to help hold in that moisture, control damping off, and you know, that little bit of mold that sometimes can f 
creep up on top of your soil here. And then I will be using this humidity dome to cover them up. And I'll take you over the, to the grow tent and show you my setup. As you can see, I could probably fit some more stuff in here as well. So I need to uh, maximize the use of space here and see what other things maybe I want to get started underneath this humidity dome. Okay, so here is what's going on in my grow tent right now. Um, about an hour ago, it was very messy. There was a lot of dead of foliage in here. I removed my two cucumber plants that I had going all winter long. They were trailing all over these ropes and I just picked the last cucumber off of the plant today and sent it in Preston's lunch. Told him that was the last one. He was very upset to think that he has to wait until summertime to have any more garden cucumbers. So I think I might start another cucumber seed and you know growing it in the crack key method in the tent here. I um I think I could probably manage it, you know, through the spring and you know by before summer hits we can have some fresh cucumbers again. This is my salad that I it just keeps giving and giving. I love growing lettuce indoors using the crack key method. If you've been watching my videos, I've been growing lettuces using the um the I do or the Hortus or an arrow garden, which works really good for the greens. This is my experimental sweet potatoes that I just potted up a couple weeks ago. I'm gonna keep them here in the grow tent until I can move them outside or move them into a sunny window upstairs. They have a very long growing season, so growing sweet potatoes in a cold climate like I live in is, you know, it's a lot of work. Not sure if I'll ever do it again, but we're gonna see if we have success. And I got two dwarf tomatoes going in the corner. I had done a video about, I don't know, six weeks ago. Started one in the arrow garden and one in the crack key system. And the arrow, it got so big in the arrow garden, it was just suffering. So I moved this one here from the arrow garden into crack key. So it's just in nutrient water. It's got some really gnarly looking tomatoes coming. This is a dwarf wild Fred, I believe. And this one's a dwarf, I think Siberian. Can't really remember the names, but they're both gonna give me some tomatoes soon, so that's great. And up here, I've set up this table now, so this is where the peppers are going to be started. And I thought it would be better for them to be closer to the light rather than sitting on the floor for when they germinate. I'm hoping it's not too strong of a light here, but um, I will kind of monitor and see how it's going. So that's my little grow tent tour for today and hope you enjoyed watching me plant up all my sweet peppers for this year's outdoor garden. So if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you hit that like button, leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe and keep watching for future videos coming to the channel. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.